You know that feeling when you ask ChatGPT something and the answer is so good that it gives you pause? Well, I've been working on language modeling for the past 10 years, and I still get that feeling. Anyway, in this video, we'll demystify the inner workings of AI and large language models, and we'll even do a little surgery on Llama. So let's dive in. Large language models are what's powering chat interfaces like ChatGPT, Claude, or DeepSeek. Even though they reached this eerie performance in the last three years, they're still built on basic AI principles that were laid out in the 60s. So instead of caving into the buzzword of the day, let's take a step back and talk about what AI models are in the most fundamental sense. Here's a general framework that will help us establish terminology. You can think of an AI model as a function f of x and w with value y, where x is the input, y is the output, f is the model architecture, and w are the model weights or the model parameters. So f is an algorithm that transforms x with the help of w, much like a mathematical function or a computer program. It's designed by AI researchers and can be expressed as code, so it's fully understood. w is a set of floating point numbers that are discovered through a process called training. Because they're not easily interpretable by humans, they give AI this aura of mystery. Collectively, f and w make up an AI model, but unfortunately, the terminology can get quite confusing when people just use the word model to refer to either of them or both of them. And to help you navigate this ambiguity, I've linked a document in the video description with the most common phrases and what they refer to. While an AI model can be expressed as a closed form mathematical function, it can also be viewed as a box where data flows from top to bottom. Most AI models are a sequence of layers where every layer is a function with its own weights and the output of one layer becomes the input to the next layer. So the original function f is simply a composition of functions f1, f2, and f3. Zooming into each layer, we can represent every weight as a node. Now let's look at the data flow. x flows through layer one where it gets multiplied by w11 and the result flows to the next layer to all of the weights. Applying the same reasoning across all layers, we get this graph with a lot of edges. Since this image resembles very early representations of neurons firing in a brain, where each neuron is a weight, AI models are sometimes called neural networks. Large language models are simply AI models that operate on text. For instance, the input could be something like, what is hippo, um, hold on a second. Hippopotamenstrosesquipaleophobia. Right, that. I'll just call it the hippo word from now on. While LLMs are extremely powerful, after all, they can write poetry and solve complicated math problems, they surprisingly do so simply one word at a time. We take our input and add two markers for the speakers. A pending assistant at the end of the word conveys to the model that we're expecting it to respond as an interlocutor, as opposed to, say, write an essay in the voice of the user. So at time t1, we feed this into the model and get our first prediction, which is fear. Next, we move the predicted word into the input and feed it back into the model. So at time t2, we get the next prediction, which is of, and we repeat the process. The model predicts long, words, and finally the end token, which means we're done. Now that we have a general understanding of how LLMs operate, let's actually play with one. We'll be using Llama, which was open sourced by Meta. Browsing Meta's portfolio on Hugging Face, you can find over 60 Llama models. Generally, you can judge which one is most appropriate for a use case based on the model name. Llama models follow a simple naming convention. Llama is the family of functions f, 3.2 is the release number, 1b or 1 billion is the number of parameters, and the last bit shows an optional specialization of the model for a particular type of input x, in this case, human instructions. Let's head over to Google Colab and dissect a Lava model. This notebook is linked to the video description so you can experiment with it. I'm using the Transformers library from Hugging Face to define a pipeline which wraps a Llama 3.2 1B instruct model. I chose the smallest model available, which has only 1 billion parameters because it's the least resource intensive. Right off the bat, we can pass our input to the pipeline and see what it does in just a few seconds. That's right. It turns out the hippo word is fear of long words, which 
I assume I have. Okay, so what's happening under the hood? We can simply print the model architecture or the function f. I know this looks like a lot, but we'll make sense of it. So this is our llama model. Same story as before, architecture f, weights w, input x, output y. Llama is also organized as a stack of layers with three main layer types, an embedding layer, 16 decoder layers, and a final linear layer. For brevity, I will be omitting some of the layers that I find less important in understanding the big picture. The bulk of processing happens in the decoder layers. Their main building block is the transformer architecture. If you want to learn more about transformers, check out this video I made at Google in collaboration with the TensorFlow team. Here, I want to focus on the initial embedding layer and the final linear layer to understand how the text input X converts into numbers and vice versa for the text output y. Here we have an embedding layer taking a text input. The first step is to use a tokenizer in order to split the text into multiple pieces, which are called tokens. Note that long words might end up split across multiple tokens, and also we have a white space marker so that we can preserve the original word boundaries. The next step is to encode these tokens into indices. Under the hood, the encoder uses a large vocabulary, which is just an ordered list of all viable tokens across multiple languages. The encoder then maps each token to its index in the list. This process is deterministic and there's actually no AI going on still. Since these indices don't have any actual meaning, we need an extra sublayer called the embedder to map each index to a meaningful vector of floating point numbers called embeddings. Embeddings have interesting geometric properties in this n-dimensional space where similar words like king and queen are clustered together. These embeddings are then passed on to the rest of the network. Now let's talk about the output linear layer. Its purpose is to map the floating point representation x17 coming from the previous decoder layers into our final text output y. In order to decide what the best value for y is, we need a way to know which word in the vocabulary makes the most sense. How do we do that? Well, the last layer gives us scores called logits for each word in the vocabulary. These scores get normalized to represent probabilities for each word. We could always choose the word with the highest probability, but instead we sample from this distribution. For instance, the word the has higher probability than the word fear. However, our sampler chose the word fear. In another invocation, it might choose the word the. This is why LLMs rarely give the same answer twice. Now that we understand how Llama works end to end, let's have some fun with it. We'll ask it to write a short poem or a haiku without the letter E. First, we can simply pass this instruction in the prompt to the model and see if it works out of the box. Okay, it turns out it doesn't because at least gentle contains E. So what we're going to do is some surgery on the internals of Llama that will change the probability of these words with E to zero so that they can never get selected. Setting a probability to zero is equivalent to setting its logit to minus infinity. So I'm going to write a custom logits processor that works in the following way. In the constructor, I'm going to look up all of the words in the dictionary that contain the letter E and keep track of their token IDs. Then in the call method, which gets called during inference and is passed the logits from the decoder layers, I'm going to overwrite the logits of the token IDs that have E with minus infinity. And finally, I will pass the processor to the pipeline. Okay, something went wrong here. It looks like it's trying to write multiple haikus or repeat the same one. Well, we set the probability of all of the words containing E to minus infinity, and that includes the end token. And because the end token is never generated, the model produces the maximum number of tokens that we allow it to, which is 500. So let's fix that. Okay, let's try it again. Much better. And there you have it a haiku about summer without any words that contain the letter E. This wraps up our deep dive into the inner workings of LLMs and the Llama model. Hopefully you walked away with a better understanding of how chat interfaces like ChatGPT are able to handle our wildest requests. Let me know in the comment section what other AI mysteries you'd like me to tackle. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. I'll catch you in the next one.